We live in a world where everyone seems to be doing the most. And the world of beauty is no exception. In recent years, there has been an astronomical rise in people getting cosmetic work. You can blame social media, the Eurocentric standards of beauty, or the fact that we've gone through two years of looking at ourselves on unflattering Zoom calls. Whatever it is, it's clear that in the race to keep up with the Joneses, or in this case, the Kardashians, we are all spending more and resorting to more drastic beauty measures to keep up with everyone else. Unfortunately, not all of these beauty treatments are worth it. And some may even end up taking you further away from your beauty goals. Hi guys, I'm Dr. K and I'm a cosmetic doctor and I'm your guardian angel guiding you through the perils of plastic surgery and giving you a guide on what treatments aren't worth it at least in my opinion. In today's video, I'm doing a countdown of which beauty treatments you need to just skip altogether. Ready? Let's go. Number one, permanent makeup. Perhaps this is just my own personal opinion talking, but very rarely do I see this turning out well. I get it. The idea is that by tattooing eyeliner, lipstick, etc., you save time getting ready and you still look polished. But here's the problem. This is like a tattoo. Actually, it is a tattoo that you're applying to your face. And that means that if they get it wrong, you just can't undo it. You either have to wait until the ink fades or you wait until the ink fades. And this very much depends on the skill and the quality of the inks and materials that they have. Very often I've seen what was supposed to be black ink looking more like an ashy, watery gray. And unlike a lipstick that you can just wipe off with a tissue, you're stuck with this. The other thing to bear in mind is that makeup, like everything else, goes through phases. One minute, thick, bushy eyebrows are in. But if you think back to the 1990s and the 2000s, where the trend was for really thin eyebrows, for me, the idea of committing to a particular makeup look for a long period of time kind of scares me. I want to be able to change my makeup from one day to the next, depending on how I feel. Semi-permanent makeup doesn't allow me to do that. Number two, cheek and jaw fillers. Yes, I said it. And I know some people might come for me in the comments, but I don't care. I don't like them. Not everyone is born to have high cheekbones. Your facial proportions and symmetry is very complex. In aesthetics, we split the face into three sections. You've got the foreface, which is the forehead area. You've got your mid face, which is your nose and your cheeks and then the lower third of your face, which is your jaw and your chin. These three sections have to work in synchronicity with each other, and that's what creates that overall attractive facial profile. Very often, when you're changing or tweaking one part of the face without adjusting or adapting the rest, this puts the rest of the face out of balance, and you can end up looking cartoonish. In my opinion, there is nothing wrong with having a rounder baby face, and that's fine. Embrace your own kind of beauty and rock with it. If you're in your 20s and 30s and you're considering facial enhancement with dermal fillers, in my opinion, I only think you need very light touches rather than a complete total facial reconstruction. Even if you're in a more mature age group, I still wouldn't recommend heavy use of dermal fillers because what it can do is lead to you having this really plumped up and inflated look and what we refer to in the industry as looking overfilled. If you're after a more dramatic facial overhaul, a la Bella Hadid, you will have to look at more specific things like surgery rather than going down the filler route. Number three, lymphatic drainage massages. Unless you have an unlimited budget to be going weekly, I would skip this one. Technically, your body doesn't need additional help from you in getting rid of toxins. I'm not saying that this doesn't work. It does, and it is used in the medical field. But the thing is that the results are only temporary. As soon as you start to eat your normal foods and your diet, all that bloating and fluid will just come right back again. So if you really wanna slim down or trim up on certain areas, I would suggest to look into things like cool sculpting, 
or the fat dissolving injections called Kybella or Aquilin. They're likely to work better and give you a much more sustained result than the lymphatic massages. Or you could try and do it the old fashioned way by losing weight, losing body fat and toning up. I'm just saying. Number four, detox or juicing regimes. You already have a system that detoxifies way more efficiently and expertly than any detox teas, juices, or systems can do. You have your liver, your kidneys, and your skin. And these have all been working since the day you were born to keep you alive and remove all of those harmful toxins from your body without you even knowing it. You may feel great from all the detox juices, but question, apart from liberating all the pounds from your pocket, is it really that effective? Number five, having large volumes of lip fillers or having excessive lip fillers. Just like a balloon, your lips only have a small amount of space. I know you're after a really plump and dramatic and juicy lips, but all that will happen is that the lip fillers will end up spreading outwards outside of the lip borders and giving you that dreaded trout pout that is a dead giveaway. Fillers can be addictive and I see it with my clients. They come for the first time and they have this amazing result and they just kind of get on that filler train and they keep coming back for more and more and more. But I have to be honest and I would advise anyone that comes to see me or asks me about lip filler that personally I would keep it at less than two mils of filler. And if you really want a natural undetectable result, I would say one mil of filler is enough for top and bottom lips. I think if you really want that just natural juicy pout, as if you've put on the world's best lip gloss, that's enough for you. One mil of filler is enough. If you like this video, drop a comment and let me know what you think. If you don't, still drop a comment and let me know what you think. And we can always have a discussion about it. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next one. Take care and bye for now.